What if one day nagtindugo din sa tunga? Before ko mag-preach, well, if ako lang ako nag-preach, no? but what if one day tindugo sa tunga din ako, tapos nang bago nga, nagdambo ko, tapos I have a vision. May vision. So, so listen to me. Tapos naglain ako ng tingog. Heavenly voice na. And then I will predict what will happen in the future. I don't know if you will be amazed or you will listen to me. Pero makuturan, there are many people right now na amuna ang ilang uh, na style. They are predicting something na matabog sa future. Kaya kung lang taon mo, wala mo nang katabog. Let me tell you this. It is not a question, it is not a question of if, but a matter of when. False teachers and false prophets have come. They will come and they will continually seek to this to introduce destructive heresies until the Lord's until the Lord's return. So ang ila na pagkare, mga kauturan, is inevitable. This week, gin-review ko ato niya church history. Kag sang year 2002, sang walang pastor ang live stream, may arap pastor ka mga gintawag. And this pastor, some of you, posible na abdan niya na niya. Nabdan niya niya pero wala ko niya siya nabdan. Nag-start ko niya sa live stream 2010. But this pastor, gintawag na mag-lead sa Life Spring Church, he has a physical disability and has to be cared for like a child. But despite of his physical challenges, he managed to bring the Word of God on fire. Late in the year of 2002, this pastor began to dream dreams and see visions. He began to reveal the struggles of some members. He began to 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 reveal, oh, to reveal the struggle of some members by his visions. So nagdala ito sa confusion, sa fears, iba na mga members. Because of this, ang leaders ng church, the men in the church, sought to talk and discuss the matter with him. As things get ironed out, according to our church history, we bid our goodbye to the pastor. Kagi pa mo yuan siya, ginsend sa liwat sa Manila with love and blessing. And this is the end of the statement sa account natin sa year 2002. We thank him how he challenged us to be strong in the word. It is also through the word that we decided to let him go. So, kagi na no, uh, I asked Elder Sherwin kung ano ang context ni niya. Kaya kung nanugit ang natapos ang una, hinggaan niya kung gamay ang idea. We, we praise God. No? Nga, wala yung naging dala sa pulpit. Kaya saan nag-preach sa pulpit, he preached the word. Pero sa pero sang araw sa, sa, sa life, you know, uh, sang, sang araw sa moment, sang, sa moment sa life niya, muna niya katabuhin siya, no? may mga dreams sa may mga visions sa saan, yes, it's own interpretation. Kaya we praise God na naghahanap pala natap na na dayon kagula nag spread sa church so may may context na sa pero may potential no nga malid yang iban sa iyang kagalingon and others will not listen to the word but listen to him because he has a vision for you he has a vision for me or for some of us so we praise god for the lord's preservation in the past the reason why nga again quote ko ni mga kauturan because ang tunanta subong nga aga sa 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 to 10 about the false teachers na tabu na dili sa aton in the past. And maybe today sa aton nga panahon subong ngayon wala pa pero hindi kita kumpiyansa because the apostle Peter gave us a warning that the coming of the false teachers is inevitable. They will come. And this is very terrifying because false teachers will not come outside of us. False teachers will come 
inside of us. False teachers will rise among us. Mga manong patalang hindi magahalin sa gwa, kundi mismo diri sa sunod sa aton mga kuturan. Now the question is, paano na aton madiscern kung ina siya manong patalang? Kung isa diri sa aton manong patalang? Paano ta madiscern if ang gawali diri sa church, ginaligya ta sa ginoo o sa word kay Jesus? Paano ta madiscern? Paano ginpreparan ni Apostle Pedro ang iglesia para hindi siya madeceive sa deceptions ng mga false teachers? How did the Apostle Peter prepare the church? Now, walang taon na ito, mga kuturan, for the past three Sundays, gin, gintunan na ito ng malikot ng letter ni Apostle Pedro kang na-discover na ito ang purpose, ang aim ni Apostle Pedro nga agin sulat siya niya. Kagin sulat niya niya, ginakonsider niya yung final testament or final word ni Apostle Pedro because the Apostle Paul, lapit na lang siya mapatay pag sulat siya niya, mga kuturan, because of persecution. Again, ang aim ni Apostle Pedro is to remind us to grow towards Christ-like maturity. Magtubo kita into Christ-like maturity that is rooted in the certainty of God's Word. Magtubo kita kay Kristo, kag magtubo kita sa pulong ni Kristo. Anong intensyon niya? Nga, amo ginang ginatuso niya before siya mapatay? Because mga uturan, as we approach our passage this morning, Makita natin sa chapter 2, there will be false teachers and their coming is inevitable. So that's why ginahambal niya nga magtubo ka mo kay Kristo. Padayon ka mo nga, padayon nga i-cultivate ang, ang godly qualities nga, 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 nga aras sa inyo, patubuon niyo na. Kang magatubo ka mo sa pagkilala niyo kay Kristo sa pulong niya mismo, sa Bible. Para ano? Ano ang big wise sa niya libro? Ang big wise niya libro para pagwardyahan ka mo sa mga pagpanginto o sa manumpatala to guard you against the deceptions of the false teachers until the second coming of Jesus Christ. So ang muna na-discovery na and we are now in this part to guard us against the deceptions of the false teachers. So diri makita na ito naligad, kung nataw na ito naligad, yung tunan natin ang nagipakita ni Apostol Pedro na may apostolic authority siya. Kag, ang iya authority is equal to the prophets. Kag makita na ito, he has authority because he was an eyewitness. He was an eyewitness, he was, he was an ear witness. Hambal ni Apostol Pablo, take heed nyo, kag i-apply nyo ang ginahambal ko sa inyo. Ang reminder ko sa inyo, pat hindi nyo bit, hindi nyo pagkalipati. Hambal ni Apostol Pedro, you trust and you trust and pay attention to the apostolic word. Pamati ka mo because this is sure. Ang tanan ni predicts Old Testament, ari na na fulfill na paagi kay Jesus. And we know him and we saw him kag ari na gitugyan niya sa amat. So listen to us. So that's why mga kuturan, kung gusto natin madiscern ang mga false teachers, kung gusto natin madiscern ang truth from error, Importante, higit nga nag-rooted kita sa scripture. Importante, higit nga nag-tubok kita sa scripture. Kaya sigurado niya mga kutura niya. Wala niya napasad sa human opinion. Kag ang word of God, last Sunday, nakita natin nga hamba ni Apostle Pedro, ka nga inisa sa lamp nga nagahatag sa enlightenment sa kadulog. So kung kita nag-rooted kita sa scripture, hindi kita mata- magtalang, hindi kita madeceived. Because the Word of God will guide us. The Word of God is the standard which we discern truth from error. So mga utod, if we want to grow in our discernment again and again, we must take heed what the Apostle Peter said. To buhay kay Kristo, be rooted in the Word of God. Amuna, ang aamugina, ang gina-emphasize ni Apostle Pedro. Nga akin ang lanong tagit magtubo na. Because ang discernment, product lang mga utod sa atong pagtubo kay Kristo, kag product lang sa atong nga pagdalong sa Biblia. So nga akin ang lanong, because when you look at chapter 3, verse 17 and 18, makita natin that even the false teachers will use the Bible. Gamiton man sa mga panungpatalang ang Bible, they will use the Bible also. They will sound like us, but the problem is, they will use the scripture in their own purpose.
They will twist the purpose of the scripture. Kag amuna, gamito nilang Bible para sa ilang gusto. And that's not, hindi amo, hindi, hindi amo kita sinak maghandol sa scripture na rin. That's why we encourage that you will bring your Bible. Bala na malipatan yung mask niya, hindi lang Bible. Amen. Sa ato na, kung malipatan ka, ito mas mapulik kita din. Ay, malipatan ko ang mask ko. Nga, nga mapulik kita kayo delikado. Pero kung malipatan mo ang Bible mo, may da. That is a reminder. Because the false teachers will use also the scriptures. They will twist it to their own destruction. That's why ang balya sa verse 17, ang balya, take care that you are not carried away with error of the lawless people and lose your own stability. Ang muna sa chapter 3, ang balya, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Na amo ginag-emphasis ni Pedro from beginning to end. Why? Ang muna ng heart siya, ha? Because kung nagatubo kita mga kuturan, kaya nagarunit kita sa scriptures, mga kuturan, we will not be deceived by the false teachers. We will be discerning. So without spiritual discernment, we will be easily carried away by the false teachers and lose our stability. So ginavalue ni Pedro ang stability. Pagbun ka, hindi ka malingkang, immovable ka. No, nga kung anong huyop sa hangin, da, hindi ka madala because you're rooted in the Word of God. Ang muna ang gusto ni Apostol Pablo sa ato, ni mga kastuan, hindi kita madala sa mga panagpatalang. Kaga managpatalang, subong pwerte, mga uturan, biskandiin lang. Kag-ara sa sulod. Huwag takabalo kung sino, pero kabaluta sa ina description ngayon ang bansa ato, hindi rin ni Apostol Pedro. So, ginabalyo ni Pedro is stability. He wants us to be stable in the Christian life. So, you grow in Christ, you grow in the Word. No? Bisa, ano ka namin isang bonsai na design na kutihan na sinamin namin, grabing value yan, pero ang bonsai, transferable. There's no rootedness. There's no stability. Pwede mo sa mo transfer, transfer. But the idea of the Apostle Peter that we will be rooted in Christ. We will be rooted in Christ. Ay ha, nagasinin ka na ako, pastor, rooted na ko yan. Dugay na ko sa live spring. Bisa yung mag-ilang ko yan, hindi ko yan maghalin, hindi ko yan madala sa manong patalang. Listen to me. Ay ha, nabi ka di every Sunday. But if you're not growing in the Word of God, dugay ka na sa live spring, but if you abandon the scriptures, kag wala ka nagbabasa sa Bible, you will be like an oak tree pag un nga kahoy sa Amerika. Pero matingala, ano kay 230 years old na ini nga kahoy. Again, research you this week. 230 years old nga kahoy. Natumba nga, natumba siya. Bakun pa ako nga kahoy, natumba. Natumba siya kay ginanay, kali iaugan. If you are not growing, you are dying. So don't tell me nga dugay ka nasa church kung kumpiyansa ka nga hindi ko yung madalaya. If you are not growing, if you are not advancing the Christian life, you will be deceived eventually. So ano mo ni Pedro para hindi kita ma-deceive? So the Apostle Peter, let's go na to chapter 2, makita na ito rin mauturan that the Apostle Peter wants to guard us against the deception of the false teachers. So that the aim of the Apostle Peter, ang gusto niya, nagwagyahan kita against the false teachers. So nagbutan si Apostle Pedro sa dako ng warning, Beware of the false teachers! Beware of the deceptions of the false teachers! Pero paano yun na himuon? Himuon niya na makuturan by exposing their teaching, their methods, their motives, their condemnation. So muna ang minsan natin sa sininga argument. Ang muna ang flow sa mensahe natin sa niya. So kung natawin ninyo verses 1 to 3, ina naga serve as introduction. Natawin nyo sa verse, natawin nyo sa Bible, no? chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. It serves as an introduction no? sa bilog na chapter. Imagine, no? he spent one chapter just to deal with the false teachers. But sila nyo, hindi nila ulaw mga uto. This is a serious matter in the life and health of the church. 
So hindi nila lang. He spent one chapter just to expose them. He exposed nila na teaching, nila na method, nila na motives, ang nila condemnation. Sa verses 1 to 3, ginambali na generally, and after na makita ka na ang ilalim intention, we will not entertain them, we will reject them. Pagkatapos sa verse 4, down to verse number 10a, i-convince kita ni Apostol Pedro na hindi nga mga manugpatalang mga kuturan ang ilang judgment is already fixed. They will be judged. Ang ilang pag-upong sigurado gini. And he will put Old Testament narratives. And then in verse number 13, or verse number 10, as tapadalo mga kuturan, na ito makita, again, expound ni Apostol Pedro ang ilang teaching, ang ilang methods, ang ilang motives, ang ilang condemnation. So una, general, ang 1 to 3. Ang second part, i-expound niya pag it, i-specify pag it, no? pag it kung anong pag it na ilang ginatudlo. So una, general, tapos specific. So sinig aga, tunga lang nga na yan, ito na tawag, verses 1 to 10, A. So to guard against the deceptions of the false teacher, the apostle Peter will expose, number one, their teaching. Look at verse number one. I-expose ni Apostol Pedro ang ilang teaching. Now, anong ilang teaching, Pastor? Now, look at verse one. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. The Bible says, But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Now, the Apostle Peter exposed their teaching. Anong teaching nila? Kung lang tawag natin, una makuturan, they will bring secretly destructive heresies. Anong nisa nga but sila yun? Pero dali lang din. Ang teaching nga makuturan, kung lang tawag natin ang first part, ginambalya sa ito ng inevitable coming sa mga false teachers. Sambalya, but false prophets also arose among the people referring to the Old Testament. Because ang context to, makita natin, nga ang, ang prophetic word, kung lang tawag natin, ng Old Testament, ang mga context, dire, sa babaw. No? Sige, tuna natin, nagligan. Kaya here, makita natin, nga mga false teachers nag-rise. Hindi lang ibago, mga utod. False teachers will rise among you. This is not a new thing. When you look at the Old Testament, this is already happening. False teachers rise among the people of God. When you go to the Old Testament, the mosang accounts mga uturan, nga ang mga false teachers mismo ara, sa sunod ara mismo sa covenant people of God. When you go to Deuteronomy chapter 13 verse 1 to 5, hanggang ni Moses, nag-warn sa katawan sa Israel, if a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you and gives you a sign, no, may prophet nagkagdo sa inyo, may damgo sa inyo, tapos may mga signs and wonders na nakita, tapos ang gintag na iya, o kung ang ginhambal iya, natabog eh. Tapos sang natabo, naghambal siya nga, let us worship other gods and not the God of Israel. Ang ba ni Moses? You shall not listen to his words. You shall not listen to the words of the prophet or the dreamer of dreams for the Lord your God is testing you. Sila ni Moses, to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice. You shall serve Him and hold fast to Him. But the prophet or the dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has taught rebellion against the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of slavery to make you live the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. You shall purge the evil from your midst. Sabi no? In the Old Testament, ng ni Moses, kung may, may manong patalang, may prophet, yung mga sinin, nagdanggo ko, may nakita ko, tapos po, grabe man, kigaman man. Ang intagnay na, tabo man. Pero ang problema, mga ngay. Kaya ang Marx and Paul's teachers, they will teach something so that madraw mad mad ka sila, sir. Ipapalayo ka nila sa ginoo. Saan na tabo na? Let us not worship Him. Let us worship other gods. 
Ang ba ni Moses? Purge the evil among you. Don't listen to him. Listen to God. Ang Diyos na simbahon tayo kaya siya nag-deliver sa atin, siya nag-luwa sa atin. Well, another account in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15 to 22. Ari naman. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15 to 22. Another Old Testament account. Ngayon naman niya nagtagtag na nga wala na tabo. Pero din kami siya nga lang sa Diyos. He used the name of God. Kanyang tag na sa wala na tabo. Ang ba ni Jesus? Or ang ba siya ginoon, no? That prophet shall die. That prophet shall die. Now when you look at verse 18, sa Deuteronomy, the, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you and from your brothers, and it is to him you shall listen. Kag ka namin, no kayo nagigad na tunan natin sa Mount Transfiguration when God the Father said, this is my beloved son. Listen to him. Pamati ke Jesus. Listen to him. Why? Because ang tutun ng prophecy, ang origin ng mga kutura, na halin sa gino, kag kung halin na sa gino, it will come. It will come to pass. Matabo gino. Kag ang tanan na may prophesize, ang tutun ng prophet in the Old Testament, natabo gino, na fulfill gino ni Jesus Christ. Ang iban wala pa, but it will be fulfilled. Jesus is the final prophet. Kag through him, na fulfill ang promises sa Gino. He's the final prophet. No wonder when you, when you read the, the Gospels, you will see nga si Jesus, yeah? Wala siya kang bali, I have a word from the Lord. I know the word of the Lord. He would say, wala siya kang bali, I have the truth. That's why Jesus spoke with authority because when Jesus Christ spoke or when Jesus Christ teach and preach about Jesus, he would tell you, I am the way, the truth, the life. Because he is the final prophet. But look at the false prophets. I'm a false prophet, and they will secretly bring destructive heresies. That is their teaching. Ano teaching nila? Ang teaching nila mga utod ang ay destructive heresies from Abali Pedro. Ang buti nila yun, mga beliefs. Chosen beliefs na wala na pasad sa Biblia. Chosen beliefs na wala, hindi mo ma-justify sa Bible. Ang muna yung na-teaching. Teaching na wala ginambal sa Bible. Kung ginambal din man sa Bible, hindi ang butsiling sa Bible. Because there are many false teachers who will use the name of God. There are many false teachers who will also preach expository preaching. There are many false teachers who will very eloquent. Pwerte pa malun ka ating forma. Wapu-wapu ang utamot. Pero minsahe mo ba ako? They will lead you away from the scriptures. Destructive heresies. Magambag ito, destructive heresies, mga pagtulunan na wala na pasad sa Biblia. So, ang pamangkot ang muna, paano mo mabal? Ang nga ginahambal yan na pasad sa Biblia? Ang muna ka importante nga ugatan naman sa pulong sa Diyos so that when you are sitting there, kag nagawa ni Diyos sa pastor, nagawa ni Diyos sa pastor, makita mo na ginampan ni pastor aral sa Bible. That's why every time I preach ng banda mo, look at verse 1, look at verse 1, look at verse 1. Why? Because ang words ginampan din naman sa pulpit, wala na mo yung obra-obra. That's why we ask you to bring the scriptures. That's why we ask you to read the scriptures ahead. Why? So that you will be also on guard. Because I will submit. Kung sala ako ng interpretation, sala ang pagandro ko sa word, I will submit to the rebuke and I will be honest to stand in the ganit sa ambal ko na muna sa insakto ng paglanta. As long as I'm convinced na muna sa correct interpretation, I will submit. But our false prophets, they will twist the scriptures. They will use the scriptures to their own end. That is their teaching, mga kuturan. You want to know? They're, 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 they're teaching, wala na pasad sa Biblia. Kag mabalaan mo, wala na pasad sa Biblia. Kung ikaw, napasad ka sa Biblia, hindi ka may tuan. Inambal na, imo-imo na na. Ang inambal na, katang-isip na na, wala na nambal sa Bible. Wala na ugat. Wala na Old Testament fruits. Wala na New Testament fruits. Wala na napasad sa apostolic word. Wala na napasad sa apostolic teaching. 
responsibilidad sa pastor, sa elders, to look out for such people and drive them away from the from the flock. Wala wala tama sa Old Testament. Ang bagat siyempre no pat yun. Purge them among you. Execute them or excommunicate them. Kaya kung hindi mauturan, they will harm the flock. Hindi ka mo maging spiritually healthy. So again, it is not a matter, it is not a question of if, but a matter of time. They will come. They will rise among us. Pero pa, notos lang mga detect. May tagaan na tadaan ni Apostle Pedro. Sangkit number one. Tandaan nyo ba? Ang ila pagtudlo. Kung ang ila pagtudlo, wala sa Bible. That is already a sign. That is already a sign. Ano pag yung mga uturan? Sulit-sulit sa verse 1. They will bring destructive teaching, destructive heresies. Tapos kung naman bali na, look at verse 1. Even denying the master who bought them. Bringing upon themselves swift dis- destruction. That is, that is a very disturbing verse, disturbing phrase. Even deny the master who bought them. They will deny Jesus. They will deny the authority and the sovereignty of Jesus. Nga nagbakala mo sa ina. Bringing upon themselves swift Destruction. Nabot sila ngayon, ang mga manog pa talang, ang una din nila nagbubon, ang gospel. Kung hindi man nila pagbubon, mix klahan nila. Gospel plus something. Gospel plus something. Amo na yun. Amo na nga lalungan, hindi mga turan, kung dugangan ang gospel, kag kung ibanan ang gospel. So anong, anong nila tublo nila? They will bring destruct, destructive heresies and they will deny Jesus. Imagine, they will deny the authority of Jesus so that the authority will be transferred in them. That's why, mga panong patalang, they spoke also with authority so that you will listen to them. By God's grace, kita dili sa live stream. Ang ato mga panong walang, even me, we stand in the authority of scriptures. That's why every time we preach here, don't do it kay ginambal ni pastor. Do it because ginambal na ni Jesus. Do it because faithfully gin-expound ni pastor kaya na-discover tara mo ini ginambal sa Bible. So we follow it not because of pastor. We follow it because it is clearly taught in the Bible. Kabay po tayo, makadana kita sa amuna ng maturity, mga kutura. And that is my prayer. Pero lang tawan yung lang mga manugpata lang. They will deny the master. They are the master themselves. So si Jesus may priority. Nakita natin sa gospel. Nakita natin kung sino si Jesus last Sunday. He is glorious. He is majestic. And try to think about this. The false teachers will deny him. The false teachers will not submit to his authority. Will not submit to his priorities. Kaga muna makakulog, mat, mga kuturan. Ang muna makakulog ba? Ang mga kuturan. Because these people, when they come to church, listen to me, when they come to church, they will not tell us, hey, I'm a false teacher. I'm here to deceive you. No. These false teachers, they are very, very dangerous because they are one of us. Mapasakay man sila sa atun para maintuan ta nila. They will also say, Jesus is our King. Jesus is my Savior. He was the one who died on the cross of Calvary. He was the one who bought, who bought me on the cross. As though, though totoo, hindi ko nuabi, nga nag-believe sila kay Jesus, kaya nag-believe sila sa apostolic word. Pero mabalaan mo, manupata lang, mapasakay sila, mapamember sila, mapakovenant member sila, pero mabalaan mo, mapikit sila because of their lifestyle. Are you listening? You will know them by their fruits. You will know them by their lifestyle. Their conduct will be exposed, mga kuturan. 
Ang ilang kabuhi, i-expose ni Apostol Pedro. Nga biskal, ano mga pasakay nila, i-expose sila. And eventually, da na ito makita nga tutuod gali, hindi din sila tutuod nga Christian. Kag wala, it's naging bakal ni Jesus Christ sa cross. Daw na. Nga adaw. Because nagdakuman sila sa live stream. Kubinan member man sa live stream. Gani? Gakanta po gani sa kwa. Ang special number man. Kaga mga kulbaan man, elder man, or deacon man, or Sunday school teacher man. We don't know! This is a terrifying message, brothers and sisters. But we must take heed. We must take heed. When you go, when you look at chapter 2, verse, not one, but chapter 2, verse, 22. Mga advance na nagkita rin ang ito. At 220, 220 yan ay, no? For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness then after knowing, knowing it, to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. Look at verse 22. What the true proverb says, what happened to them? The dog returns to its own vomit and the saw after washing herself returned to wallow in the mire. Kita niyong ending sa chapter 2? Butchili yun sila man, daw Christian man sila, kay upot naman sila. Pero grabe, nung kulang taon mo kulang ilang kabuhi, wala ang isang tutuod nga transformation. Doon ka nga isang idong ang ikaw ng iyasuka. Doon ka nga isang bako yung ipalibuan. Nagbalik dyan kung sa turuban niya. Ah, because it is his nature. Hindi mo na sa'yo mapatingal sa aircon. Mabalik na sa turuban niya. Mabalik na sa lumunang niya. Mung maduma din ang lunay. Kaya amo na sa'yo. Kung ito ang grabe yung passage. Doon ka balik, Pedro. Doon ka nga. Kung nga naka-excape sila. Kung nagbalik man sila. The idea is, pick it. It's not. Wala na dula ay nakalawasan, kundi in the first place, even though they are one of us, they are not genuinely converted into Christianity. Why? Because sa nila kabuhay opposite sa gina-expect ni Pedro, gina-expect ni Jesus. When you go to chapter 1, remember chapter 1? Ang mali po sa Pedro, engaged ka mo sa godly living, actively engaged. Dapat makita sa inyo ang faith, makita sa inyo ang love, makita sa inyo self-control. Magkita sa inyong knowledge, magkita sa inyong steadfastness, but these people have no control. Wala control. And that prepared us to the second point. But before going to the second point, it reminds me of Judas Iscariot. Do you remember Judas? Try to imagine. Judas Iscariot, who put this in Jesus Christ for three years. He saw a lot. He was an eyewitness. He saw the power of Jesus. He preached the gospel. He cast out many demons. But in the end, look, he was a false convert. He was a false prophet. He was a false teacher. Pagamuni mga kulubaan, mga uturan. Again, basa ako taliwat ng 2 Peter. Kaya hindi nyo magkita ang balanse. Ginoon akong tutuod ka ng Christian. Gintransform ka sa ginoon according sa word of God ang bansa. First Peter, born again ka, gintagaan ka sa tungod sa dako nga kalukoy sa ginoon, na born again ka. If you are really a born again Christian, gintagaan ka sa ginoon, bagong nature, you cannot go back to old life anymore. Yes, arang struggle. Yes, we are not perfect. But you cannot stay in that state anymore. You are grieving every time you sin. Alam mo na mga kulubmat. Ang mga kulubaan. Kaya ba, si Pupotable ka lang, nabis ka ng kabuhay mo, wala transformation, wala ka gano'n magkato sa simbahan, ina-deny mong master, mga sa Lord Jesus Christ, may priorities sa kung gusto mo mga sunod ng priorities mo. Alungin. Bisa nagbaton ka pa sa una, pero kung nakabuhi mo subong, wala transformation, dako kina-question mark. 
That's the big question mark. I'm gonna worry about Andy. Well, I was kicked out in my first pastoral ministry because of that. Because I questioned the genuineness of the conversion of the members. But again, brothers, out of love, I tell you this. Habay patanik sa bugay ka Luis ang gino. You will seek Him and you will repent from your sins. Kung ikaw na. Let's go to verse 2. So the Apostle Peter exposed their teaching. The Apostle, the Apostle Peter also exposed their methods. Anong method do sa mga false teachers? May method do mas na ganit? Yes. Hindi lang lang ako dito do nila. No wonder they are very dangerous because these people, damo mamati sa ila, ang damo masunod sa ila. Pati ano? Many will follow them and many will listen to them. No, ano ila na? Now look at verse 2. Many will follow their sensuality and because of them, the way of truth will be blasphemed. So anong method nila? Ang method nila mauturan, ang appeal nila sa tao is sensuality. Ano na sabot sa ninyong pastor? Boko namin sa appeal na nila mauturan. Kaya nga, ang isa nila yan, shadow katahum. Wala yung review, wala pagsabdong yan. Kulang yan, chill lang yan. Tapos, ang ilaya appeal niya, sensuality, but sinin nun, live according to your own desire. Wow! What an appealing preacher! You can live according to your own desire! So people will follow their sensuality because you can live according to your own desire. So imagine, magamba ka sensuality din mga uturan. May relation isang mga uturan sa sexual sin. So try to imagine, the false teachers will, will justify sexual sin. And imagine, no, ang, ang, kablo ka mong ang Old Testament, kag ang New Testament, kung ano na obsolete na na. So dapat, ibaguhunta na ang nambutsilingon sila. So that's why there are many people who are redefining the Bible. So they will introduce something new. Christian sexuality is too limiting, too restrictive, too tied, too tied to the past. So, kung sa Christian pa, Christian belief, sexual relations are to be confined to marriage. Christian belief na ang fornication, sex before marriage, adultery, sex outside marriage, homosexuality or same-sex partner is sinful, is a, are sinful acts. So, ano yung Muslim false teachers? Ay, Muslim false teachers, they will find justification. So once we justify mo na, siyempre, nami, many people will be attracted to you. Eh, kung hindi ba nyo? Kung maging soft ka na, kung na-redefine mo na, ma-justify mo na nga pwede nga eh? No wonder, no wonder, I was surprised. There was a Christian author, Christian author, who celebrate, the, who celebrate her lesbian daughter. There was a Christian conservative church sa una nga subong they are pro same sex marriage. And try to imagine, imagine na niyo ka mauturan, ma-officiate ko wedding, ma-officiate kami ni Pastor Jerry wedding, buha ka lalaki, kinakasal na mo. And we will find text, we will expound to the scripture na pwede ni. Of course, our church will be controversial and at the same time attractive to other people. So people are living in sin, will come to our church. We will have many followers. Life spring will be renovated. You know, it's crystal, isn't it? The extent of it, it's not a crystal. False teachers and methods, they will use sensuality para damag masunod mo. Living according to your own desire. Makaupugan. Are you listening to your pastors here? We don't promote this kind of life. 
And if you can see people, if you can see one of us living according to their own desire, you know, you know that we are not promoting it. Na kung Domingo, kabalute sa priority niya, Domingo mo worship ta kay Jesus. Online ka man o kung ane ka man di, ang heart mo, you want to worship Jesus because Jesus is your master. Amen? Jesus is our master. We know Jesus. He was the one who died for us. So, ari the day with one priority. Hindi nga magkabuhi kita according to our own desire, but according to the desire of Jesus Christ. And that's why it grieves our heart when you see some somebody or someone, uh, Hi, Nimbro man is a live stream. Pero nga daw kung Domingo, hindi nakatulton mo simba. Ahay, nalipat na. Ang muna ang mga kuturan sa glass na kataloy sa Diyos, gusto natin sundo ng pulong sa ginoo. We want to follow, we want to be responsible in our members. That's why we come in our members kita. So that we can we can responsible we, we, so that we will be responsible in shepherding you. And if there's if kung kinala ni correct, we will correct it. If kung kinala ni review, kiri review pa na. Pero kung wala member set, open lang tayo. Membro man ko pero floating niya. Kauturan. Amo na method sa mga false teachers. They will justify simple acts so that they will gain following. Ano pa gin? Look at verse 3. And in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Grabe no? So nakita na ito ilang teaching, ilang methods, ilang motives. Anong motives nila? Bawari ay ang motibo nila ay. Ang motibo nila, they seek to make financial gain from believers by false teaching. Anong motibo nila? In their greed, they would exploit you with false words. So these people, mga mga ita false words nila, they will fabricate maubra-ubra sila sa mga pagtulunan nga kanami pamatian ang lalapasan sa Bible. Anong intention nila? Ang intention nila para sa ila ng ugalingon. They will tell you anything you want. So try to imagine, iambal ko na kung gusto mo pamatian, pero kung kabalo kong maigo ka na, kagkabalo kong may kerida ka na, kabalo kong nakakabuhi ka sa lahat, galibihin ka mo, hindi ko na pag-iambal sa pulpit. So sige, ito lang na. Basta kabalo ka na na. <laughs> Mga kuturan, in their greed, they will exploit you. They will, they will make promises. They will invent promises so that they will benefit on you. Kaunon kanila. Ang mga, supposed to be, ang mga pastors, they are shepherds, they will feed the flock. Patambuko nila ang flock, they will take care of the flock. But these false teachers, ano yung mga nila? They will take advantage sa flock. Ang ilang inalagas. Ang ila ko guling on money. They will tell you anything you want so that they can gain whatever they want. Money, sex, and acclaim. They will spew whatever false words are they para masatisfy nila ang ila na greed. Mayroon isa ka pastor. The pioneers sa church. May hundred members sa the tribal ministry ya. Pero kasubok na nga. One time, may false teacher nga, nag, nga nag-upod sila. And then, yung question niya, pastor, you know what? Ang pastor niya, ang pastor niya lang, kung tutuod ginasang iya sa Diyos, kag kung tutuod ginasang godly, kag gin-bless ni Lord, dapat tani ang kurmaya na namin. Dapat tani may salakyan na nasa fortuner. Dapat tayo nag-start na sa mga villages na taong-taong. So yun na sa mga pastor niyo, hindi na sa tinawag sa Diyos. Because materially, he was not blessed by God. And sadly, the members listened to that false teacher. 
Ang basta po si the reason why pigado ka mo Japan because ang pasto niya pigado. The reason why why ka mo gusto sa kabuhay niya because in the first place na tawag ka mo sa pasto na hindi tinawag sa Diyos because he was not materially blessed. And suddenly, yung pagwa ang pastor na faithful sa church, kaginakomodate nila ang false teacher. And that is a very sad story. What's the motivation of these false teachers? They're motivated by greed. They will take your wallet, your wife. They will deceive your children, divide your family, destroy your reputation, and even take your soul. And they will, they will never think twice. Sa paghimo nila mauturan. Throughout the history, ang marka sa manupatalang is marked by sexual sin, money, and dishonesty. I know. I know. Nga fresh sa bayan nyo, no? Dabula ang balita sa social media, pastor na involved sa kwarta, hindi nga, grabe niya, ariga, wala yung bagit niya nga, siya pwede nyo si Kristo, involved man sa babae, involved man sa kwarta, ariga, 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 grabe, gakot, may involved, is ka din lang, involved man sa mga scandals, mga uturan, they, that's the mark of a false teacher. They are motivated by money, they're motivated by sex. There's no control. Opposite, sige, expect ni Apostle Pedro sa aton mga kapuha. And look at the following verses. Verse 4 to 10. The Apostle Peter exposed their teaching, their methods, their motives, and their judgment. So, Di na tumakita ang mauturan, may inis na mga manupatalang, may sinin mo to, grabe, ito hindi madakpan, ito, damos na, damo may kasunod sila, and then, ano naman, then sometimes, do nag, uh, nagkaka-discourage kita, but look, look at verse 3, katapusan sa verse 3, their condemnation from long ago is not idle, and their destruction is not asleep. Ano ba't sinin mo sila mauturan? Ang ba't sinin mo sila? Unang taon na ito na ang asleep nila, Butsilingon waits for them with unsleeping eyes. Butsilingon na muni, ang matasang Diyos is with them. God knows what they are what they are planning. Biskan kita wa ita kabalo, but God knows and God will judge them accordingly in the right manner and time. Even if it looks like they are getting away with their deception. Kaya kung hindi pa kita kung dirisido sila, that's why in quote ni Apostle Pedro, ang chapter, ang verse 4 down to verse number 10, he quoted Old Testament stories to prove the point that no matter what, judgment will fall in these false teachers. Kaya muna mga kuturan, if you will follow the false teachers, so come on, you know what will happen to you in the end. You will be judged because these people, their end and their destiny will be judgment. Judgment ang ilang padulungan. So mga uturan, we don't need to entertain them. We need to reject them immediately. Natawa niyo mga uturan ang verse 4. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell, and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, so in quote ni ni, 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 ni Pedro, parti sa angel, ang, 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 eh, ang angel na kasala, ano yung bras ng Diyos? Ginhukman sila sa Diyos. And ultimately, they will be judged in the future. Ginhukman na sila, kaghukman pa sila sa Diyos in the future. Now look at the following verse, ginkot siya pag-it si Noah. No? Ginkot siya pag-it si Noah. Kapo ng taon na, tundira. God did not spare the ancient world. But preserve Noah a herald of righteousness with seven others when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly. So, na tao na ito, ng context na, grabe ka lang upan sa tao, mapadala ang Diyos judgment to the world through water. So, nisubuhin si Noah, magubras ang ark, and Noah is a herald of righteousness. So, nagabila sa ark, is also proclaiming that there will be a coming judgment. May pagukom, may judgment ko babot, but people are not listening to that judgment. Pero ano na tabo? Wala na tabo ang judgment, sige no? 
natabo gate ang judgment sa Diyos. Water fell down and covered the earth. Pero pagtupas ang judgment, ginpreserve sa Ginoo si Noah. Grabe no? May judgment pero may araw man deliverance. There is a certainty of judgment. There is also a certainty of deliverance. That God will deliver His people. Look at the story of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember? Sodom and Gomorrah is a wicked city. Grabe niya city mo kung tulad Sodom and Gomorrah. Grabe ang kalautan, grabe ang immorality, grabe ang sensuality. People have no control. As in super mga kutura ng kalautan na nila. When you read that account again in Genesis chapter 19. And, and Lot was there. Nag-a-start sa, and the Bible says, kung nagtawin natin sa account, ang bala sa verse 6 to 8, by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, God condemned them to extinction making them an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. Love you know? Sodom and Gomorrah, yung padalaan sa inyong kalayo, natunaw ang city. All of them were, all of them died. Natabukin ang judgment. And if he rescued righteous Lot, greatly distressed by sensual conduct of the wicked, for as the righteous man lived among day by day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over the lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Ah, you know? But what happened? He rescues him, you know, si Lot. Nagpadala sa judgment. Again, there is, there is judgment and there is deliverance. Na deliver si Lot. Pero nagtupa ang judgment sa mga Malahot. And according to Apostle Peter, this is an example kung ano matabu sa mga ungodly. They will be judged. Ang ilang at destiny will be judgment. But look at verse 9. Verse 9, the Bible says, The Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under the punishment until the day of judgment. This is amazing, brothers and sisters, because no matter what is, no matter what, ano yung mong sang Diyos tawa niya? He will preserve His people. He will deliver His people and He will bring judgment to the ungodly. So mga kuturan, this is the certainty of the, of, of the certainty of God's judgment to the ungodly to the false teachers. At the same time, a certainty of our deliverance, hindi tapot pabayan sa Diyos. And finally, about that's a verse 10. Especially those who indulge in the lust of the defiling passion and despise authority. So makita na, ito yung mga tulang, ang mga manumpatala ng mga false teachers. Ang ilang, indo, ang ilang engagement, ara sa unod, ara sa kalibutan, Ara ng engagement nila. Possibly ang sensuality, not necessarily sexual sin gain, pero ang essence ng sensuality is simply living according to your own desire. That is lost. Nung muna sa ang kaibog, mga kuturan. Last of the defiling passions. Nga wala ka ng control kung anong gusto mo, bahala na ng priority ni Jesus. Kung anong gusto mo, bahala na naman, bahala na wala kung ka-follow sa word ni God. Ang importante ang desire ko. Ang importante yung gusto ko. Ang muna matabo. Mauturan ang muna mga false teachers kag ang muna ang mga tao na wala na kakilala kay Jesus. Kag ang kululbaan, kung Christian ka, nag-claim ka na Christian ka, kag wala ka control, kag ang Lord sa life mo, ang self mo, grabe na nalipatan ko, gina ng balde ni Apostle Pedro, the way of truth, you know, is blaspheme. The way of truth is blaspheme. When you connect that to, to chapter 2, verse 21, the word there is the way to righteousness. Ang way of righteousness, kuno na, ako po na tawin yun ang way of righteousness. Ang balita, sa verse 21, for if would have been better for them never to have known the way of righteousness, than after knowing it turned back from the holy commandment delivered to them. So when you move away from the truth, don't expect that you will walk in the in, that you will walk in the path of righteousness. 
Amo na kay importanteng kamaturan. Kay ang kamaturan mga uturan will lead us to correct living. True believing will lead us to true living. Amo na lagi na value tang word because ari ti kamaturan mga utod. We don't just invent truth. We don't just invent our teaching. We get our teaching from the word of God. But look at the false prophets. The false prophets will engage in the passions of the flesh and they will despise authority. They will deny Jesus and they will become the authority of their lives. Old Testament, you will be like God. Kagamuna ang gusto sa nyawa. That we will become like God, kita ma-determine sa right and wrong. If you will become the authority of your life, you will be the master of your life, you will be the one who will determine what is right and wrong. Rogabi, no? Pero mitagal, ito na nuwari ngayon ni Apostle Pedro. Gin expose siya sa aton to guard us against the false teachers, gin expose siya sa aton kung ano ila pagtudlo, ano ila motibo, ano ila metodo, ano ang matabo sila sa future. Kag kung ikaw, wala gahalong. Kung Christian ka, na wala ka gahalong, hindi ka discerning, matiplang ka, makunol ka, and you will lose your stability. Hindi daw glaw, no? May tendency ni pastor na madisip ka. Yes, ginatay ka rin niya, warning. Because there is always a tendency. If you're not growing, if you're not seeking God in His Word, may tendency. Muna, hindi kita magpalagpat post po sa Facebook. Not forward, forward sa mga pagtulungan. Tapos ang ibang bawin, hindi, Anna. Ito hindi ka sigurado, hindi pag-post. Ito hindi, Anna. Ito hindi sa Bible yung nambal niya ni Man. Pamati, kamu wala. Ariya si Diyos, huwain ikit niya. Pastoran ta ka mga nai. Don't forward anything and kasigurado. Praise mga nai. Because there's someone who posted yesterday or last week, yung praise ko tong yung post siya, ayaw gawin. Hindi niya hada sa mga munong patalang. Oh, come on. Let us be careful. Especially in the social media. Kaya ba, sige, spread kita. Kaya nag-promote kita sa mga pagtudlo o mga balikan. No, don't ever entertain sa mga gintago sa sang angel. Don't you ever entertain sa mga naglagaw kami sa inferno, naglagaw kami sa heaven. Nagdamgo sila, muli pa sa nakita nila. Ay, yung tubig ko din. Mautod. Ah, ni sigurado na mo. Basa ha. Intindiha. You can understand the Bible. Pastor, paano may intindihan ng Bible man? Matahong na pumangkot na. Kung gusto mo may intindihan ba? I'm willing to, to sit down with you and teach you. Mga kuturan, we are in the last days. I'm preaching hard. I'm not cool and not chill here in the pulpit. Why? Because your spiritual life is at stake. The health of the church is at stake. There are many people who don't understand. There are many people who are saying, Ano naman do? Hindi mo na pa YouTube yung wali man? Why mo kayo nagwali para magsikat sa YouTube? We may not sound like big names in the internet. We may not look like them or move like them. But we will assure you by the grace and mercy of God that every time we stand here in the pulpit, we will be faithful to the preaching of God's word. And kagamuna na gamakar sa ginoong mga kuturan, hindi kayo kanami sa mong tulukon, kanami sa mong pamatian. May inab lang kong mamati kasi labro ka namin sa mga tsaw, mong pagwa mo sa church, doon na gano'n, kao ka. But all of those things are katang isip lang. Wala na pasad sa Bible. Mga utod, false teachers, gusto nila i-enslave to liwat sa sala. That's why they want to destroy the gospel. But this is amazing because we have already the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Jesus died on the cross so that we will be set free from all our sins. So that we will only live for Him. 
this week, there was a godly man, a godly, faithful expositor of God's word by the name of Jay Packer. He interviewed him. Sa nabili niya kabuhi, before sa napatay, he interviewed him. Ano pa encourage niya sa church? Ano ang last words niya sa church? And Jay Packer said, Glorify Christ every way. Glorify Christ every way. So we don't deny Jesus in our lifestyle. We don't deny Jesus in our life, not only in church, but everywhere. But it is our heart's desire that we will glorify Him in every way because He is our Lord. He is our Master. Amen? Amen. All hail the power of Jesus' name, brothers and sisters. By Patanet, today we will bow down to our King. We will, we will honor Him. And we will live for Him. And we will tell others there will be coming judgment. Members of members of Life Spring or church goers of Life Spring and Agapagustrasbo, we are calling you right now to come again to the to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. Repent from your sins. And if you're here today, because Sila yung mundo, ako to, oh. I'm here, pero wala ko relationship kay Jesus. Wala transformation ng life ko. Pagpuli ko sa balay, ako ko mo, Japon. My dear friend, there is mercy for you. God is so merciful. Nga ari ka, subo na batian mo ang warning, na batian mo ang message. Please, 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 come to Him and ask for forgiveness. Repent from your sin and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Challenge to the members. Challenge to the Christians. Let us not deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us live for Him. Let us honor Him in our lives. Let us continue to grow and be rooted in the Word of God so that we will be discerning. Because once we discern the false teachers, we will reject them. We will reject them. And we will continue to trust the apostolic word, the word of God. Oh God, may you preserve your church. Lord, be merciful to your church. And even to us, you know, handle some word. The Bible, Lord, magpasako kami, permisi mo pulong, iwaling mo pulong, wala na sa iban pa, Lord, tunayin mo pulong. Thank you, Lord. Let us all rise as we sing our closing hymn.